A while there, like many of you, I grew up watching Bob Ross's painting shows, and to me, he was one of the humblest teachers I have ever known. So, as a humble tribute to the greatest of all, I thought I would try and bring one of his paintings into life, including an actual river with actual water. And the painting I chose is from Season 3, Episode 9, The Old Mill. For my canvas, I'll be using a foam core board onto which I have stuck some XPS foam. I'll then use a bit of air drying clay and form the actual terrain. Now Bob Ross tried to make painting accessible to anyone, be it beginner or an artist, and in that spirit of simplicity over complexity, I'll try to keep this diorama as simple and easy as I can. Anyway, to make the actual running river, I'll create a tiny little pool on the beginning of the river. This serves two purposes. One is to create a cushion for the water to pool in instead of shooting out. The second is to create an elevation so that water can actually flow. I'll then add a lump of clay where the dam would be and then this should create a place for the water mill would turn. Once the shape of the terrain is completed, I can remove the template for the house and let the clay to dry. After the clay has dried, I'll start working on the color and I'll follow Bob Ross's instruction on how to paint it. First, I'll start off with a brown color undercoat. After that, I'll use a bit of darker colors here and there to create a bit of depth to the terrain. After that, I'll go with a bit of gray color here and there, just like he did with the painting. One of the creative liberty I took here was to create a bit more gray colors on the terrain, not just the river. As for the grass vlogs, I have two colors here, a slightly yellow and a slightly green color. I'll start off with a much more greener mix of grass vlogs and apply it on tiny little patches here and there. After that, I'll go at it with a much more yellower mix of grass flocking. This should hopefully create some variation in the terrain and not just make it look like one giant color. Now while the glue dries, I'll start working on the river. First I started off with some sandy grit on the side of the river bank. After that, I tried to use some of the pebbles I used for my Lord of the Rings diorama. But the size of the pebbles were simply too large and it made my river look really tiny. So I decided to remove all of it and instead stick little bits of stone here and there to make it look like large boulders in the river. I also took the liberty of adding a bit of stones here and there to make the terrain look a bit more dynamic. With that done, I'll simply sprinkle a lot of this sand onto the riverbed and then seal it off using some diluted PVA glue. That should pretty much complete the terrain, save for the trees and bushes, but let's do that later. For now, let's start working on the house. To make the house, I try to come up with a new idea. First, I'll simply cut off the shape of a house using XPS foam. I had to sand it outside. Hence, I don't have any footage, but as long as I don't breathe any of this, the advantage of this is that it's a very easy method. For the wood planks on the house, I'll be using this thin sheet of balsa wood and cut it into appropriate sizes. I'll try to vary the size of the wood plank to make it a bit more interesting. After I have cut out a sufficient number of planks, I'll apply a bit of double-sided tape on the sides of the house. I'll then take the tiny little strips of balsa wood and then simply stick it onto the wall. The other advantage of this method is that I don't need to measure the size of the planks and I'll simply need to cut it out once it's stuck in place. I'll also try to vary the length of the planks to keep it a bit more interesting and natural. For the roof panels, normally you would have roof shingles and all of that, but if I do that, it wouldn't look like Bob Ross's painting, so I decided to keep it in the way he painted it which is vertical planks. That 
should pretty much complete the planks and now we are ready for some paint. For the paint on the house as well, I'll apply the same method with ball bronze. First, I'll start off with a darker brown colored shade. I'll then go at certain pieces of plank with a whiter color to make it stand out from the rest and break out the flatter brown color. Again, I'm trying to match the color of the house as I see in Bob Ross's painting, making sure that I keep some of the whiter panels that I see in the painting. Finally, to finish off the paint, I'll be using a bit of yellow or brown color to make it look like a bit of rotting wood to bring back a bit of realism. And usually, I don't really do this, but I decided to go at it with a bit of dry white painting. That pretty much completes the house, so we can now stick it onto the diorama using some hot glue. Unfortunately, I got so distracted crafting the whole thing that I forgot to add the dam for the river. And because of that, from an engineering point of view, this will not look very convincing. But the point of this diorama was to make it as close as possible to Bob Ross's painting and I think this looks pretty convincing. However, one of the things I won't be able to replicate is the water effect on the water wheel. This would be more of a technical impossibility because the way he drew it makes it look like it's a overshoot or top-down water wheel where the water enters from the top. So I won't be able to get the water to drop down on the water wheel. Now at this point, when I was starting to paint the bricks, I realized that the river looked a bit boring. So I decided to apply a bit of grey colour and mud colour, I suppose, to make it look like sediments or, well, the kind of things that you see under the river. Again, I'll try to keep it as close to the painting as possible and unfortunately my block of bricks starts to look more like some sandbags in a Warhammer diorama, but oh well. Anyway, with that completed, let's start working on the engineering site on the bottom. To form the housing for my pumps and water reservoir, I'll be using some black foam core board. I'll cut it into an appropriate shape and then simply stick it on the bottom of the diorama, including this tiny little hole for a control panel to go into. Now what I'm planning is to have all the pumps and accessories here. And I'll make a hole here to make the water spur out from the top. To feed the water from my pumps, I'll be using this flexible tube. I'll also be adding this toggle switch for the whole system. And finally, the actual water pump, which is a tiny little DC powered water pump. To start things off, I'll drill an appropriate sized hole onto the beginning of the river. For the control panel, I'll be using a bit of thick balsa wood. And instead of simply using it as it is, I'll give it some weathering and cuts here and there to make it look old and a bit retro. Once that's done, before I paint it, I will drill some holes for the accessories and other things to go into. I'll then go at it with mixtures of brown, yellow and black colors to vary it and make it look a bit more interesting. Once that's done, it's all a matter of fitting the accessories and fittings on place. I'll start it off with a power LED to indicate when the system is running. This is not necessary, but I think it looks cool. Next, I will hide some of the dangly cables from the water pump and then stick it onto place. After that, I will screw in the toggle switch to power the whole thing. Now to secure the pump on the board and the pipes as well, I'll be using this armature wire that I'll cut into tiny little strips and then secure it onto the board. This would not only hold everything in place, but I think it also gives it a nice steampunk retro feel to it. With all the fittings and tubings in place, I'll be able to slide the components in place and then screw it down using some tiny little screws. Again, I could have stuck it on just as it is, but I think a bit of screw makes it look a bit more interesting.
with that done, let's start to fit the pipes. First, I'll start by fitting in the tube at the inlet. I'll then pluck the hole of the tube using some cut out pieces of silicone and then glue it up together using some UV resin. Once that's done, I'll apply UV resin on the riverbed to make it waterproof and prevent the whole diorama from getting soaked and drenched. One of the more crucial thing I need to do is to create an elevation at the end of the river. This would have two purpose. One is to allow the river to pull up a little bit, just like in the painting. The other purpose is that it would create a separation for the water to drip down instead of sliding on the bottom panel. Speaking of water tanks, let's make one. To make the water tank, I'll be using a bit of thin acrylic panel, or in this case a bit of polystyrene. To glue them together, I'll be temporarily sticking them using some masking tapes to hold it in place. After that, I'll apply a bit of UV resin to make the whole thing waterproof. Now I didn't recall this, but I also applied a bit of super glue to make the whole thing stick together because resin will peel off eventually from the acrylic panel. Once the UV resin has cured properly, I'll drill a hole on the side for the intake of the pump. And to connect the tube to the tank, I found this nozzle from my air sprayed can. I'll steal it just like I did with every other can in my house and then cut it into appropriate lengths. All that's left to do is to stick it gracefully onto the water tank. Anyway, I made some changes to the diorama overnight. I added an extra pump because I was worried the water will not be strong enough. This auxiliary pump fits into a nozzle at the base of the water wheel so that in case of anything, I can power it to make the wheel spin faster. Likewise, I also had to add an extra intake for the new pump but thankfully, it started to serve as a support for the water tank. With the tank in place, it's simply a matter of sticking the remaining tubes in place. With the pump system complete, let's start working on the actual water wheel. To make the water wheel, the material has to be waterproof and buoyant enough so that it can spin. So I decided to use thin sheet of ABS plastic. The concept is simple, but the crucial part of this is that the center point have to align with everything. So to maintain the level of accuracy, I'll be using the exact same diameter for every cutout. To glue the whole thing in place, I'll be using this circular guide on my cutting mat and then align the center hole to be in the right place. With the sides ready, let's add some blades or impellers on the water wheel. Now if you want to try making this yourself, please remember to keep a slight angle on the blades so that you can get the maximum amount of thrust for your water flow. If you want to read up on it, you can research a bit more on impulse turbine blades. Anyway, engineering nonsense aside, I'll be using this tiny little bearing that I got somewhere which I can't remember. I hazard to guess that this would have worked fine without the bearing, but I don't want to take any chances and I already have this, so I'm going with it. Once everything is glued and in place, I'll cut out a tiny little piece of balsa wood and then stick it onto the shaft. This way, in order to adjust the water wheel, I'll simply have to shorten the height until it reaches the water level. With that ready, let's start operating the river. And look at that, that's a nice flowing river. Anyway, just a technical note, my whole diorama is crappily made, so I had an instance of the water being super critical, so this meant that getting the water wheel to spin properly was a bit of a challenge, but eventually I got the right angle and we have the water wheel completed. And I couldn't be happier that it's working. Well, you can let me know how you feel about it yourself.
Now that everything seems to be working, I'll try to label some of the control panel to make it look even more retro and steampunk. I'll also label some of the indicators on the water tank as well, including some names of the staff that are on duty. These engineers on duty are the names of my YouTube channel members. And a special welcome to Mary Stirrett for joining the team. Thank you all so much for your extra support to the channel. Now then, let's finally start working on the vegetation. To make the iconic tree on the front, I'll be using some jewelry wires and then create a shape out of it. I'll try my best to keep the tree looking as close as possible to how Bob Ross painted it. Once I have a decent shape, I'll apply a layer of PVA glue. After that, I'll sprinkle a bit of the sand that I used in the river. Once that's done, to create the tips of the branches, I'll be using these dry pieces of twig. I'll cut out tiny little pieces of the branches and then stick it at the ends of my tree. Once the glue has dried, I'll apply a bit of PVA glue on the branching tips and then sprinkle it with some of the foamy grassy textures of all the leaves. This is essentially the same method we have used in other dioramas. The only difference here would be that the leaves on the branches are a bit thicker, so to do that I will apply extra layers of foam textures to make the branches look thicker or more lush. And to make it look even closer to the Bob Ross's painting, I'll spray paint a bit of yellow color at the tip to make it look just like the painting. After that, it's just a matter of sticking them onto the diorama. Now in Bob Ross's painting, I see quite a bit of bushes here and there, so to do that, I'll cut out some of the excess branches and then stick it onto appropriate places. There are quite a lot of bushes in Bob Ross's painting, but I decided to keep it a bit sparse to make the whole thing look a bit cleaner. There it is, a physical render of Bob Ross's The Old Mill Painting. As always, I try to look at my work and see what the things that I can improve on. So, the first thing I notice is that my water wheel is rather wonky. Perhaps next time I'll try to make it a bit more mechanically accurate. The other thing is that I would like to make this whole thing much larger, but I simply don't have the space for that. So unfortunately, this is it, but I'll definitely like to try something larger. And finally, the engineer in me wishes that the dam was an actual dam and not just an aesthetic thing. I'll definitely like to try something that's technically accurate and functional. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for joining me this far. I hope you enjoyed this diorama and the video. Wish you a good day and cheers.